Hello StarCraft fans, this is Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another Daily Legacy of the Void upload. This is a game between Womek and Umbreon on Prion Terraces. This is a TVT. Haven't cast one of these in a while. <clears throat> Mirror matches don't really get a lot of attention on my channel, but I know a lot of people are very, very big fans of them, so let's go ahead. In the bottom right of Prion Terraces, it is the red Terran player. It is Womek. Representing TCOM. And in the top left of Prion Terraces, we have the blue Terran player. It is Umbreon from Dadins. I have no idea whose face that is. Uh, some guy who looks awesome, though. I'm sure I'd like to hang out with him. Alright, so Terran versus Terran and Legacy of the Void can involve quite a few different things. Although mostly it's going to be Marine Tank with Medivacs dropping the tanks into different spots to allow tanks to splash onto Marines. To put it succinctly. But we'll have to see if this gets mixed up at all. I know some of these players are interested in trying out new things because Legacy of the Void is very, very new. So let's hope this is the case and let's see what they're doing. All right, so mirror builds at least. Barracks, refineries, SCVs, nothing too crazy going on. Both not choosing to completely wall off here. Just because any Reaper expands can just hop up there anyway, so not really a reason to wall off. Also, if Marine Marauder pressure, pressure shows up at your front door, then they can shoot down your supply depots from the low ground being pretty safe and there's not much you can do about it. So, Terran players usually don't wall off in a TVT. Uh, on TVP it's a different story just because you want to keep those adepts out of your base. But TVT for these days, walling off is definitely not the current thing to do. Checking for a base, stealing some minerals here is Womek and no, there is not a command center to worry about. It wasn't some crazy command center first build. <clears throat> Gonna go up into the main base and see what actually is going on. The answer is... A factory! A factory coming up from Embryon. Womek is getting an orbital command, and then it looks like, oh, he went for the command center instead. So he says, all right, all right, Blue Terran player, I'm going to go ahead and get my command center before yours. And hope you don't show up with a one base timing that really crushes me, because if that happens, I'll be very sad. But if that doesn't happen, then I will be able to hang on and get a better economy and show up with a bigger army to defeat your one base army. So I think that's the goal here for Womek. We'll see if that happens for him or not. And in the production tab, there is a Reaper coming out for Umbreon. And the response to that, because I think Womek has to know there's one coming, is did he just make a Marauder? Or is he going to make a Marauder? I don't. Yes, he did make a Marauder here at the top of this ramp. So the Marauders do okay against Reapers, especially if you jump right into it. Wham, wham, two direct shots. And one shot on the unbuildable rocks. Hmm. So indestructible plates and unbuildable rocks are what they are, depending on what map you're at. Another Reaper coming out. Is this uh, going to be a fairly high pressure situation here for Umbreon coming for Womek? And yeah, it's going to be two Reapers and a Hellion. The Reapers can go ahead and hop up into the uh, high ground here and get into the main base. A full wall now for Womek. He might have to abandon this command center if he is not very careful or very, very good at holding this off. The Hellion goes home. No, Umbreon, why are you sending the Hellion home? Uh, all right. You, you go ahead and do that, friend. Anyway, the Reapers, we're going to follow them because they're really fun to watch with their jetpacks. Up up here, a couple shots from the Marauder. Not enough to actually kill it, though. They just kind of keep on moving. No concussive shell on that Marauder to slow them down. And getting one SCV kill and might get another one. No, KD-8 charge almost tries to get the second one. Another Marauder. We're boxing in the Reapers here with Marauders. Don't know if I've seen that before. And all the Reapers escape. They do. The Reapers managed to escape, both with very, very low hit point totals. Three SCVs did die there, so that was pretty good. They got the scout off, and they killed a few workers. They forced the marauder, Marauders to run around in a panic, which is a life goal if you are a... Uh, sorry, if you are whew, a Reaper. Oh, a Cyclone coming in, using that lock-on ability and the Typhoon missiles to actually kill that Reaper. KD-8 charge knocking the mule back. But not doing too much damage, just 10 hit points there, so that's just, just fine there. And a Banshee, so again, continued harassment here for an Umbreon. on Womack doing more of a standard two-base consistent build. I think this might pay off for Womack here in the long run, but in the meantime, this Banshee is here to do some damage. Marauder cannot do anything against that Banshee. There are no turrets whatsoever. The Cyclone will be able to kill it, I think. Uh, yeah, that only has 300, uh, 140 hit points, rather. So if the Cyclone comes in here, uses the lock-on ability, can get rid of this Banshee fairly quickly. Here comes the Cyclone, using that lock-on ability. No, it cloaks! It cloaks at the last second. There's the scan, and here comes the lock-on. It's going to be repairing the Cyclone, trying to kill the Banshee, and yes, the repair is clutch. It is enough to keep the Cyclone alive. 
And the Cyclone has three kills now after killing the Reapers and a Banshee. Cyclone, the hero of this match so far in TBT. I like to see the use of the Legacy of the Void units in this particular matchup. Here comes another push. Umbreon continuing not to like Legacy of the Void, instead making Ravens and Tanks and Marines and Hellions. And pushing out again, still on this single base. He really should expand, but he's spending his money pretty well. I keep getting up here. He doesn't have any money floating around to do it. He's just continuing the pressure. Continuing to do what he needs to do. He has more workers than Womack as well. And I just don't know if it's actually working out for Umbrian at all. He has killed six SCVs, which is good. Again, it's the main reason he's ahead of Womack in that worker count. What is continuing to come down here? Marines, Marines. These guys have upgrades. Not really. Not really any upgrades. Blue Flame upgrade for the Hellions as well. There's only one, which is a weird upgrade to get. And here comes Umbreon setting siege, but the response comes with Cyclone and a bunch of Hellions and a Marauder, and wow, the tank doing huge amounts of splash damage to everything here. The Cyclone needs to be a hero and get rid of that tank. It needs to come in auto turret, actually helping to remove that tank. Amazing. Manages to hold it off. The Raven does escape for Umbreon. The rest of the units retreat on back home, possibly waiting for reinforcements. Oh, and look, Umbreon takes the gold base. Takes the gold base as his expansion and expands to his natural spot. Holy shamoly, good choice there from Umbreon. I like what he's doing, keeping the pressure up and then behind it, double expanding once to the gold. He might, I mean, he might be able to make this work. That one biggest base attack I felt like was kind of crippling him in the long term. But man, this double expand is really changing my mind on that. I'm not sure if this number of Hellions is exactly what Womack needs. The number of tanks here, I guess there's one tank. I thought there was going to be another one, but... Production tab says, yes, there are definitely more tanks coming out, and Hellions just get absolutely murdered by tanks. But it looks like Womack is definitely going for a mech-type build here. So many Hellions on the way. Goodness gracious, getting medevacs? Probably going to turn those into Hellbats then, is my assumption. And over here, it's just Marine Tank, Raven. Are there any more? Just going to be medevacs, going to be in tanks, going to be... All right, so it looks like Umbreon's going for the standard build for TBT and Legacy of the Void, which is the Marine Tank with Medivacs for support. And Womack is going for Mech. So it's going to be a Mech versus Biotank play here on Falcon Paladin's channel. Hope you're enjoying yourself so far. It's been a pretty action-packed game, in my estimation. And <laughs> that dude's face just keeps making me laugh. <laughs> I imagine he's maybe watching something surprising on YouTube. I don't know. I don't know what that reaction is for, but here comes the push for Womack. Dun, dun, da, da, dun, dun, da, da, dun, dun. I have Star Wars music in my head because one of my coworkers is a huge Star Wars fan, and he wears Star Wars shirts every single day, or at least he will until the release of Star Wars The Force Awakens, and his ringtone is the Imperial March from Star Wars. And so I have that song in my head. Every time his phone rings in the office, I hear that, and it gets stuck. So here comes a push. Oh, a flank on all those Marines. They get picked up and boosted out of there before too many of them can die. The tank is splashing from afar. Hellbat drop on top of everything, though. Trying to roast down these Marines, getting most of all of them tanks dying at the same time. Some units do get picked up and get out of there from Umbreon, but the Hellbats are going to town on this gold base. They're trying to destroy this command center. The SCVs are allowed to retreat for Umbreon. All that Womack wants is this command center, forcing a liftoff, pushing up the ramp before the tank can get into siege position. And here is a huge ball of tanks and Marines. They're just getting decimated by these Hellions and these Hellbats. The Cyclone here as well, pushing right on up into the main base, trying to burn down these supply depots. Never mind, picking up and lifting over the top of them, dropping on top of these bio units for Umbreon and actually killing those ones as well. These Hellbats are actually pretty strong against the bio, especially with the healing overhead, picking up more reinforcements and dropping them on in. Womack is feeling no mercy for the wicked today, going after a tank. Hellbat versus tank is not usually a fight you want to see if you're the Hellbats, but if you outnumber them, you're going to be just fine. So many Hellbats on top of all these production facilities. Umbreon is in a lot of trouble, trying to stutter step and stim away and kill everything that he can, but finally all of his bio does get cleaned up. The final Marauder is dying, the final Marine is dying, and that's it for ground forces for Umbreon. There are units all over the place killing SCVs, killing add-ons, and that's it. Umbreon is defeated. Womex victorious. And Umbreon has left the game. Yeehaw! What a fantastic build from Umbreon. I like the timing on that. He got his factories out. He was able to hold off the harass by not making any units of his own that you would normally make against Reapers. Uh, like, for example, the Cyclone. 
and a Marauder against Reaper Expands? That's just insane. And then he just made a whole bunch of Hellions, got the Hellbat transformations in there, got some Medivacs for healing, and then pushed on up with a single cycle and it pretty much just wrecked this bio tank play. So I kind of like this. I'd like to see more of this on the ladder in TVT. I mean, not that I don't like the Marine tank with the Medivac dropping everywhere. It's kind of fun to watch, but again, just variation is the spice of life. I'm not sure if that's the actual quote. Is it just variety? I think it's variety. Is the spice of life. Life anyway. Umbreon just fantastically played indeed. Resources lost tab here is five fifty eight fifty minerals for Umbreon and fourteen hundred gas, and only twenty three hundred minerals and two hundred gas for Womack. Just super super efficient in the resources lost tab there. APM for these players pretty good, about two hundred each, two hundred one fifty, and that's about it. Thank you so much for watching today. This has been Falcon Paladin with yet another daily legacy of the Void upload. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter and Facebook. You can visit my store if you like. There's a link in the description. And until next time, as always, you take care of yourself.